Hey, what's going on everybody? Happy New Year. Uh, this is Ollie from Flight Comp and I have a uh, update on the Aerotech Ikura that I'm building. I've managed to put the uh, servo tray in and uh, find a solution for a motor. So I'll give you a really quick look around and a brief update. This is my servo tray. It's basically a very long plywood servo tray that goes well into the nose, all the way back till about here on the uh, wing root, and it really stiffens up the front of the fuselage. It's basically two layers of eighth inch or about three millimeter ply, and um, it has some inserts to accept uh, these screws. And then I have 3D printed a platform which will hold the main flight battery the receiver right here, the rudder servo, and also on the bottom it holds the uh, receiver battery. I'm going to use a um, different battery for the receiver. And then it has some areas to route the antenna wires, one here and one underneath. I've uh, taken some pictures of this in detail and I will show those to you now. So in addition to the servo tray, I have managed to get a motor mount in. This is sort of a homemade carbon fiber fiberglass hybrid motor mount. And it's in there very securely. Now I cut the nose to 30 millimeters. Um, looking back on it now, I wish I would have made it a little bit uh, bigger. So I think 32 or 34 would have been a better choice because the mounting is very tight here on the uh, motor. So for my motor, I did a lot of looking around and uh, I wanted to use a four cell setup and not a six cell or an eight cell and still get a lot of power. And after much searching, I uh, settled on this uh, 10 shock 2230 motor and a uh, Reisenauer Micro Edition 5 to 1 gearbox. This motor is pretty big, uh, just to give you a comparison. This is a uh, F5J setup for a strong F5J airplane, and you can see how much bigger this, this motor is. This is a 4,000 kV, or they call it five turns, and according to eCalc, uh, on 4-cell, I forget which prop, but on 4-cell with the correct prop, this should produce almost 7,000 grams of thrust, which should be a ton of power, um, maybe too much but I want this plane to be really, really fast. We'll see how this goes. I'm hoping I'm not too nose heavy. Um, I can always vary the size of the uh, flight pack because I only really need like a minute or two of, uh, of run time on this motor. The rest of the time will just be uh, gliding around. Okay, in addition to the motor and the servo tray, I've also 3D printed a spinner so here's the first one I printed, just to test it, and then here is a white one that I printed, and this is a Reisenauer clamping hub. It is a offset hub, so the props fold nicely against the fuselage. Now the reason why I 3D printed the spinner hub, or spinner cap I should say, is because I couldn't really find a spinner cap that matched the fuselage shape really well. This is a Reisenauer cap and it's just much too pointy. This is the actual nose section that I cut off of the Ikura and if I, if I just compare all these you can see how much taller the Reisenauer cap is 
And so I've tried to match the shape with my 3D printed part to the uh, original nose that I cut off as closely as possible. And I think I've done a pretty good job. It matches the fuselage shape really nicely. I'll get the motor installed and slide the uh, spinner on so you can see it better. So here's what the uh, spinner looks like when it's installed on the fuselage. I think it really matches the contour of the uh, fuselage nicely. And it's pretty short. It is the same height as the original cap that I cut off. So I'm really happy with this. The other thing I'm going to do to this is just because um, this is a pretty powerful motor, I think I'm going to fiberglass the outside of the spinner and prime it and paint it. Uh, that'll give it some additional strength and it'll also improve the, uh, the quality, the surface quality and, and finish of the spinner. So that's almost done. There's really not a whole lot more to do. I need to um, get the radio set up and get the airplane programmed. One thing that I might do is, since this is such a very long and heavy motor, I can actually move the back of the motor a little bit when I uh, put pressure on it with my finger, and I'm worried about uh, the torque when the motor is under power, um, moving the motor and possibly breaking it out of its mount or um, cracking the fuselage or something. So I think I'm going to put a plywood mount on the back of the motor to stabilize the back of the motor so that it can't move side to side or up, to, or up and down. So I'm going to think about that a little bit. That's going to be one of the next things I'm going to do. And then, like I said, I have to um, program the radio and CG the airplane. I have a feeling I might be on the nose-heavy side. I'm hoping I can get away with a 3,000 milliamp 4S pack. But I think I could go all the way down to 1,800 or 2,000 if I had to, to help the CG. So there was a quick look at the uh, Ikura. Like I said, it's basically complete. A few more things to do. So this was part two of the series. And then in part three, we'll have the, um, the finish spinner, the rear motor mount, and the radio set up, and we will go fly. So uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next